Hi, it's Cindy from the Osterville Library, and today we're really excited to bring you a author. Um, she's a member of the Cape Cod Women's Association, and I heard her speak there. And she wrote a book on uh, called A Life Suspended, and it is about a, a mother and son story of dealing with a child with autism. And you've had quite the journey. When I heard you speak, it was very moving, and um, it's been an emotional roller coaster and a, a just a a whole new world that I probably thought you, you probably never thought you'd experience. So can um tell me what inspired you to write this book, A Life Suspended? Well, when everything was happening in our life with Jack, you know, at the time he was um, expelled from school, we were, we were homeschooling him with the help of um, tutors and, and what I call my first responders, these people that came in that knew how to deal with behavioral issues and knew how to teach a child that was um, having a really challenging time managing their own body and their own, um, you know, it just definitely blocked him from his education. So when we went, when I was going through all of that, it was such a lonely, lonely time for me and I felt so isolated. And when you have a child that is behavioral and you are in a community, people don't really know how to react to you. They don't know how to respond to you. They don't know how to talk to you. Um, and there's some judgment um, that happens and it's really sad. So when I was going through that, I really felt so strongly when I was getting to the other side that people need to know, people need to know not only from the view of educators and, and people in the community that this is what happens to a family when when behaviors happen and a diagnosis is not is is undetected for years you know and this is what happens so for me it was like my way of writing the story that i needed so desperately to hear when i was in that place in my life so it was me of paying it forward paying it back to those stories that i reached for um, from authors that have children with autism so in a nutshell that's what inspired me well, that's good I'm, it's, I'm sure it's going to be so helpful to so many people and i know like you know they always say autism is a spectrum so there's kids at all different um areas on that spectrum what would you you know experiences of raising a child with autism what would you tell yourself now if knowing all you know yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I would tell myself to breathe, <laughs> stop, drop, and breathe, really, to get on the yoga mat, to take a walk, you know, um, it's, it's really a one minute at a time, it's one moment at a time, and being kind to myself, and knowing that my parenting skills, whatever they are at the time, is enough, and that I am enough, so I think that, you know, as as a young person or a younger person, not having had the experience and then being thrown into it, um, it, it was so overwhelming that if I, if I look back and I think, man, if I only had the perspective now, and hopefully maybe by sharing my experience, people that are going through it can maybe tap into being a little kind and gentler to themselves when they're in it. That's a good point. So, Tell us about your decision to write the book and what you hope to accomplish with it. My decision to write the book, you know, I always say, um, you know, it's one of the top three things that I was sure of, um, you know, because I, I just felt so strongly after getting through, you know, the first year with Jack and all of that and dealing with my own emotions, my own um, mental health uh, components and all of that, I felt so strongly that I wanted to share this story with others. So, um, you know, it really was a, it was a no brainer. It was just totally overwhelming because even though I, I was an English major in college, I've always, always wrote uh, stories, um, journaled, all of that stuff. So for me, it, it was um, seamless that of course I was going to write it but it was so overwhelming to understand. Like it was like the biggest term paper ever, right? <laughs> it's like, sure. you know, and like trying to figure out like how to break it down and, and what will it look like? And 
and that took a little time. And, and uh, my friend, Katri, who you know, was like, I remember telling her about this. And she said, you know, just one page at a time, one yeah. page at a time. So that's, that's what I did. And, um, you know, it worked. <laughs> so. so tell us a little bit about the book. Does it flow like your experiences of raising a child with autism and like, like how, you know, well, tell us a little bit about how the book is written and structured. I basically um, told uh, our story, um, my story and Jack's story, because we were so enmeshed in this situation together and, and we were both suspended. So what I decided to do is I knew, I knew exactly where it was going to begin. It started, it opens on the day that he ran out of the school that he was attending, the public school he was attending and our interactions with the people within the school and administration and all that. So it starts there. And I felt like that was a great starting place because it was very jarring and traumatic for everyone involved, including staff. I mean, it was just, it was really hard. And so then I took it from there and just went through our journey for the next, you know, basically two years, roughly two years about, you know, the people we worked with, how we got them back into the school system, what that looked like, the different tools that we used with him to help him regulate his body. So it really reads like a, it reads like a story. It reads because it's our, you know, the two year span of, of that experience. And, um, and from what I'm understanding, I mean, it's hard when, when you're the writer because I don't have perspective in terms of I'm not the reader, right? But people that I have bought it, they're just like, wow. I mean, they're blowing through it. They're reading it really quickly. They say it reads nicely. So I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Great. Well, I know when you spoke, it was just, it's fascinating. And um, now, do you have other children? Yeah, I have um, three, uh, three more sons. So four boys all together. Oh, wow. So yeah, so it's really like my husband described it as like when the kids are a little younger, he'd be like driving home, come through the door from working a long day. Um, he's an administrator in Boston. And it was like the Muppets in like the happiness hotel where the kids are hanging from the rafters <laughs> and there's snacks everywhere. And pretty much that was our house for a long time. <laughs> and it's hard when you have other siblings in that to have a, a child going through, you know, this and trying to figure it out for yourself. And it does take a toll on the other children. It absolutely does. And I think that that's something, you know, I look back at and it makes me a little sad. You know, I look at, I, you know, even today, I'll look today and think, man, the experience that we had and, and my energy going towards that one child, I, I really, they got gypped. You know, they got, they did, you know, they got gypped a little bit because my energy and my, everything was pouring into this one kid, this one situation. And so, but it happens, it, it happens. It's, it, you know, I'm only one person. So then just trying to like balance that whole aspect of forgiving myself because there's things that were out of my control, you know what I mean? And then trying to not make up for it, but, you know, be aware that there was times I weren't there and try to like, okay, how can I be here now? Because that's all I have. I only have here now. And that's the kind of philosophy I've been trying to work on over the past few years um, because, you know, I love all my kids. Yeah. So how, how's Jack doing now? I mean, how old is he now? He is in high school, so he's um, starting high school, and he he's doing great. You know, he's very independent. He likes a schedule. He's funny, and I think that was one of the things my husband and we talk about. You know, there's mis there's a misconception that you know kids in the autistic autistic community or adults in the autistic autistic community don't have a sense of humor. Well, they, they are, they are funny, <laughs> you know, like Jack loves to laugh and he tells jokes and um, yeah, he's doing great. You know, he's, he's very good students, very conscientious, you know, we really, we're so happy, so happy. How did the pandemic and everything change? Cause you know, our autistic kids love schedules and that routine. Sometimes when you have this big upheaval, <clears throat> it's hard for them to, you know, to, and take it in. 
Yeah, it was, it was really, I mean, the first month I think for everybody in our house was really bizarre and fearful. Like everyone was like, oh, what does this mean? Um, and then when, so then when school started back up virtually, I do have to say his school did a, an amazing job. His teachers, the staff, they did really an amazing job, you know, going above and beyond getting this stuff online. And, um, I mean, he had gym classes, like he was working out. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, amazing. So that component was great, but he, he also missed the one, you know, the interaction with his peers and it just wasn't the same. Right. So, you know, he definitely missed that. But in terms of like, he, he got his work in, he was like a hundred percent, um, you know, attending and like, so he did well, not preferred, certainly not preferred. Um, and there was a couple bumps with trying to get work in and stuff, which frustrated him because he's a very good student. He's very conscientious. So, um, so we've had to work a little bit through that, but overall he did really well. Yeah. Well, that's good. Now I know when you, you've got a situation like this in your life, you tend as a woman and as a mother, you tend to put 150,000% into it. So that had to have a physical toll on you and, you know, being, just emotionally and tired and worn out and frustrated and all that. How did you deal and take care of yourself? Or, or I mean, I don't, can't imagine with three other children how you did that. So how did you? Are you talking specifically the pandemic? No, just in general, in- even before. I'm sure that added a whole nother layer, but. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just actually worked out this morning, like for the first time, like a real workout yeah. um, since the pandemic. So yay for me. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things when everything started happening with Jack, you know, for the first few months, I, I just shut down. Like I totally and completely emotionally shut down. I was just surviving. I was just doing the next thing. And, um, and, and I think because I was just in that state, I, that's what the stress was building and all that. And that's when I started having panic attacks. It was like just this incremental building of stress and me not taking care of myself. So then I had to figure out, well, I can't live like that because that's just, I don't want to live like that. Um, I have a kid that I need to take care of. I have four kids. So then I had to figure out what those tools were just like Jack had his tools, how to regulate his body. I needed to find tools for myself. And as he got more independent and his behaviors were so, so much more um, manageable, I was able to like, you know, go to a yoga class. I was able to take a walk without worrying what was going to happen when I was gone. You know, so those little increments of freedom I took advantage of, you know, and I had to let go of the fear and let somebody else step in and be there. You know what I mean? Like whether it was my husband or my mother or whatever, I had to let people help me so I could help myself. And that's really important. What else would you like people to know about your book? Are you going to do a follow-up or? You know, it's funny. I, I, I do have another project that I'm working on. Um, it's a book about surrender. Um, so it talks about self-care and it talks about generations, you know, and reflecting on that and what it means for us today. So I don't think that will be a follow. That's not going to be a follow-up for this particular book. I don't know if I'm going to write um, a follow-up in terms of like Jack's story. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> That's a good thing. Do you have a copy of your book there? I do. Can you hold it up? And uh, I know we need to get a copy here for the library so people can check it out. And hopefully at some point when we have, um, you know, in-person programming again, we can have you come in for a talk because it truly is a very, very important subject. And, you know, as you say, I, I don't think people on the outside sometimes don't know. They just say, oh, that's just some spoiled brat kid or something like that and don't realize that the kid's having an internal struggle. Um, you know, and it's it's hard for people to accept that. And um, I think this is a great way for people to learn more. And uh, I appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I would absolutely love to come in and and speak to people. And and I and you know that's what's hard about like, you know, doing the book promotion because like that was one of the reasons for putting it out because I want to have connection with people and and look them in the eye and 
and see them, you know, because this is um, the journey of raising a child or any child, but specifically a child with special needs is, um, you know, it's uh, it's a little tricky. So I'm uh, I'm I'm so thankful to put this out there in the world for other people to read it. Well, we're very appreciative of it, and thank you, and thank you so much for your time today. Also, absolutely, thank you, Cindy.